Hey everybody, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. So I'm going to reveal my cold weather mix design that we use. We have really good luck with you. I'll tell you about that a little bit later in the video. Right now what we're doing is we're pouring a garage floor. We got a garage floor, a breezeway, and then kind of a like, like a mud slab underneath which is going to be the outside area to come out the house. You'll see that a little bit later in the video. Now this floor, you know, in Maine, most people have to put styrofoam under their floors. It's just code. That's why the styrofoam's there. And we use we use fiber mesh in the concrete, so we don't need to use wire or rebar in here. The fiber mesh works really good for us, especially when the concrete floor is locked inside a foundation like this. It's not going to go anywhere. As long as the sub base has really good compaction and it's done right, then the floor is never going to settle. It's not going to heave. All it has to do is the fiber mesh holds everything together really good. And then we saw cut for expansion and contraction joints. So we don't get any cracks really. Occasionally, it's rare, but we might get one. But we control cracking pretty good the way we pour this. We also use a high range water reducer in our concrete. So we can get it to flow really good without adding water. And that gives us a really nice mix to work with. This garage, you know, because of the subgrade, the subgrade was finished kind of low. They really could have brought the subgrade up inside the garage a little bit higher. We ended up pouring this nine inches thick in the back and then about six and a half to seven in the front in order to get over that footing in the front. You can see my two by four form across that garage door. That's just about at grade. So I, we couldn't really lower the, the floor anymore. We didn't want to get it too thin over that. So we had to go with that. And then we, we sloped it two inches up to the back. And that's what Darren's doing right now is he's getting the correct slope in the center of the floor. So everything pitches towards the garage doors. But this ended up being a little bit thicker floor than normal for sure. You know, probably averaged about eight inches thick. Now as, as the temperatures get colder, like this morning it was 28 degrees Fahrenheit when we got here. Started pouring at 7 a.m. And we generally, we generally like to change up our mix designs a little bit when the, when the weather gets colder. Now one of the main things is the thing that's going to help you out the most is when the concrete companies start adding warm water or hot water to the mixes. That's really... That's really a key. You, I don't know if you can see it was spitting snow just a little bit here this morning as we was pouring this. But the warm water is going to make a big, big difference because, you know, concrete cures from heat of hydration. When the water mixes with the cement, a chemical reaction takes place, causes some heat, and that heat helps cure the concrete. Well, without hot water, if they're still using cold water and it's 28, 30 degrees out, that chemical reaction takes a long, long time to take place and your concrete's just not going to cure very good, so you're going to be sitting on it all day. Now, as soon as they add warm water to the mix, and by warm water, I, that could be 80 degrees, 90 degrees, 100 degrees, that's, that's considered warm water. That really helps speed things up, especially when the temps are in the 30s or even the 40s. So that's going to be a big, big bonus right there. And then adding a little bit higher PSI concrete. Like we generally pour a 3,500. Now if you need it to set a little quicker, you know, just bump it up to a 4,000 PSI. Add another, add a little bit more cement to the mix. It's going to increase the heat. And that's going to get you to, to get your floors or whatever you're pouring to dry it, cure up a little bit quicker. So we'll start, with, this is a 3,500 today because we knew the temps were going to be up into the mid-50s, you know, in the afternoon. Plus, the concrete drivers had about an hour and 20 minutes here, so that's going to that's gonna help set things up too. It's going to heat the concrete up being inside the drum, you know, just slowly spinning all the way to the job site is going to help a little bit. As the temps get colder, we'll bump these floors, these exact same floors up to our 4,000 PSI. And then they'll also bump the water up. They'll get the water up to about as high as 160 degrees. That would be considered hot water. And if that was the case, you'd see steam rolling off this stuff right now. At, you know, with air temps at 28 degrees. The concrete temperature with 160 degree water, the concrete temperatures would be probably in the 80s. 
and it would just look like a fog right here probably the concrete temps right now are close to in the 70s probably the low 70s and then with the styrofoam under it that's going to help even hold that heat in it a little bit better so this this garage floor will end up curing up really good today though we'll get a power trial finish on it we'll get it all sawed and then that's going to be what we what we use pretty much moving forward here for the next next month it's the beginning of november right now what what do you guys like for your cold weather mix design so ours is basically again a 3500 to a 4000 psi using warm water to start with and you know late in the fall up to hot water so like 100 degree water up to 160 degree water in the winter and then on top of that we'll add an accelerator too we use most of the time we'll use bag flake calcium chloride as an accelerator and depending on how much concrete is in the mix will depend on how many bags we use they usually come in 50 pound bags so usually anything under six yards six yards and under we'll use one bag six seven eight yards we might use like a bag and a half and then eight to ten yards or ten and a half we'll use two bags of calcium in the mix on top of the you know the hot water and the higher psi concrete once you lay that stuff out like we do right now it starts cooling off really really quick so the more the more things you can do to generate heat the faster it's going to cure and the better off you're going to be the less likely you'll be that something like this will freeze once the once the air temperatures get 28 degrees fahrenheit or lower you really got to think at night you know overnight or whatever you really got to think about protecting your concrete with some type of blankets or something so these were the other two spaces so where Luke's standing right there that's kind of like an entryway and then to the right and then down there that lower area is kind of just like a mud slab the owner's going to end up framing that up at least maybe one step down from the doorway so that'll all be covered in there and there really won't be any access in there so we're just going to cover that up with concrete as you'll see here shortly and just and he'll end up you know waterproofing it insulating it and then that'll be it for that but this part right here where we're pouring he's going to end up doing some type of flooring over that i think some type of wood or tile flooring over the top of this you can see the sun's coming up now it's getting close to like sunrise sunrise here right now to on this day was about 7 20 a.m we're getting close to daylight savings where we turn the clocks back but we haven't got there quite yet darren's just going to use a small screed for that so in this load we had 110 degree water he had an hour and 20 minutes to get here we had 110 degree water we had 10 yards of concrete we added two bags of cal so after about you know probably 20 minutes when you started dumping until about 20 minutes you can start to feel this stuff kind of kind of take off a little bit you can feel it and then you know you, you don't have much time to fool around with it you got to get it down get it to where you want it get it both loaded and then you're going to be okay after that then it's going to really start cooling down and slowing down a little bit but initially when it's still really really warm and you put all that accelerator in it you know there's no time to fool around you got to get it down quick or you're going to be fighting it really and you don't really want to keep adding water to the load because you're just going to weaken it and it'll end up cracking so the, the the faster you can get it down get it level without adding water the better off you're going to be there so that kind of just tapered down just giving you a little bit better shot of this mud slab we just wanted to cover up the stone that was there to kind of seal it off and then he's gonna he's gonna put some type of spray foam over it actually and then he's gonna deck that up but that's basically what we start using late fall for our our cold weather mix design that sets up really good for us these guys I didn't get the power trial in here but these guys get out of here on this job at about 2 30 in the afternoon they were all power trialed sawed and out of here so it ended up curing up for them really really good um, 
Now we're just going to fill that up probably six or seven inches, try to get that bottom piece a little bit level, bull float it, and then we'll be out of here. But again, guys, thanks for watching. Come on back. We'll see you on the next one.